So here we have a famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci. What if we press C for the crop tool and then expand the canvas? And then we ask AI to fill up the rest of the areas. Can it do that? Let's try it. So this is our platform. And what if we click on upload an image? Let's go with our friend Leonardo. Hit open. It will show you a crop option. We have selected all of it. Click on done. Now you have two options, edit image and generate variations. We're going to go ahead and choose edit image. Now let's tell AI what we need to fill it with. So let's say we type in countryside. So this is a countryside possibly, and we want to fill it up with that and then click on generate. Now it's going to show you an error. It's asking you to erase an area, but all of those areas are already erased. So we're just going to dab in once in the empty area and it should do the job. Now let's see what it does. There you go, my friend. It has done a fantastic job. Let's take a look at this. So this is our first one. This is actually wonderful. Now let's take a look at the second one. This is great as well. This is, what is that? That's crazy. Now, if you're not satisfied with any of these results, you can click on generate one more time. Now, do keep in mind that every time you click on generate, it's going to cost you a little something. We're going to get to that later. But for right now, take a look at it. Some of it is really, really good. I think I'm going to go with that. And even in that, let's say you're not satisfied with what the heck that is, then you can edit that one and you can choose to erase this part. Go with the countryside. That's fine click on generate. So there you go. That area is perfectly clear. This is the original one. And in all of the images, it has done a fantastic job. Some creative users have even generated a panorama out of one single small image, not just panorama. You can also create an infinite zooming loop with this. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube. I think there are a few on how to do that. You can check out this one if you're interested. So what is this technology? The AI that we are talking about right here is called Dal E2, as in the combination of Salvador Dal E, the artist, and also Wall E, the Disney Pixar robot. Just like Mid Journey, Stable Diffusion, and many other AI platforms, it also generates images with text. By the way, we had made a video about Mid Journey. You can check it out right here. But Dal E, unlike many others, allows you to edit your images. And that's what we're going to explore in this video. So here's a quick explanation. The ways you can edit photos right now are limited as of recording this video. There are just two ways at the moment, and that is if you click on upload right now, let's go with this one click on open. First of all, it is only limited to square images. So you have to crop it to square. That is a bummer. And we are hoping that with time, more options will come. So let's go with this size. Click on done. The first option right here is edit image. If you click on that, it allows you to replace a portion of the image. So let's say I want to change the flower. So I'm going to just erase that area. By the way, you can change the size of the brush from right here. So I'm going to erase it all just like this. And let's say I want to replace it with a sunflower. So let's type in sunflower and click on generate. Now, as it begins to process images for you, it's going to show you some tips to get better results. The more the details you have in the text, the better the results. But have a look at it. This is just incredible. I think I'm going to go with this one and you can just go ahead and download it or simply save it to your collection and it will be in your DALI collection. So if you click on go to my collection, as you can see, your image is saved right there. Now, the second way that we can edit our image is creating variations. So let's click on upload and let's go with this one. Let's say you don't like this pattern of the clouds and you want to create some variations. Maybe you downloaded skies from a sky pack or just using the ready-made skies in Photoshop and everybody else is using it. You like the sky, but you want some variation in it. So first of all, let's crop it to your liking. It has to be square. Click on done and click on generate variations. Let's see what it does. Now take a look at it. It is the same sky, the same style, the same atmosphere, the same lighting. It is just amazing. So we can go ahead and download it and use it. By the way, the resolution might not be enough. It is still in beta. Now, even though at the moment these options are very limited, they do open a plethora of possibilities. Let's explore them one by one with some examples. Now, we can do compositing that we usually spend hours to do in Photoshop just with DALI, just by giving it a command. Take a look at it. So if you click on upload, let's go with this car image. And why don't we place this car on NASCAR tracks? So click on done and click on edit image. Now, let's erase everything. Now, you might want a smaller brush for painting near the car. I'm doing a very quick job. This seems just okay for now. So let's type car in NASCAR track. Done, <laughs> just done. And some of them are just crazy. Take a look at this one. This one is insane. You can type in anything you want. Let's type in Venice. And here we are in Venice. Take a look, all of the compositing done. You can also use these features for adding, removing, or modifying objects. So let's upload our artwork. And by the way, I had created this with Mid Journey. Let's go with this crop, all right. And let's say you want to remove these sunglasses. Let's see if you can do that. Now, don't you get ideas. I know what you're thinking. You'll get banned, don't do that. Now we have that masked out. 
I'm also masking out a little bit of the shadows because when we add something, we don't want the shadows in there. So let's say woman anime with beautiful eyes and take a look. It did a pretty okay job. Some of it is a little asymmetrical, but you can always fix it in Photoshop. So let's say you copy this one, you flip it, you place it here, but it is generating stuff. This one I think would suit the image a little better. I would change the red to some other color, but apart from that, this is great. The only thing is, I don't know why all of these AI platforms are not very good with symmetry. I clicked on generate one more time and here we have a few better results. I like what it did on the right hand side. Here as well, it's okay, but you know, when it comes to the details, it's usually hit or miss with DAL-E. And by the way, when it comes to removing things, it does an incredible job. So here we have a photo of two puppies and let's say I want to remove one of them for some reason and click on done and click on edit image. So let's say we're gonna remove this one and we want a solo photo of the one on the right. So let's type in dog sitting alone. Click on generate. Let's see what it does. Take a look. Brilliant. And if you focus on this one, have a look. It has also generated a tail right here. It has also generated the legs at the back. Even in this one, it did a great job, but kind of messed it up a little bit here and there. But have a look. It has kept the depth of field in mind, blurred out the areas which are further away and generated some in-focus flowers that were on the floor. And what if you wanted to not remove, but modify it? So sitting with lion, how about that? Now the area that we have erased is kind of too small for a lion, so it would be funny to see what it creates. And there you have your lion head. Weird. Anyway, you can erase a little more, try again, see what it creates. But the point is, you can add, remove, or modify objects. Now another great way that you can use this is for inspiration by creating variations of your work. So let us say you have created some illustration using your design and using just your style, you wanna create some more variations of the same design. Is that possible? Let's see. So we're gonna choose this illustration. It has a style to it, doesn't it? Now, if you want to generate some more variations using the same style, let's see if it can do that. So we clicked on generate variations. Even though this is not perfect, it has created some different poses in just your style. I know in some cases it has made the hand too thick, legs may not be very proportionate, but you can definitely get ideas for creating different poses using your style. Now here, my friend, is the climax for the lesson. A major use case for this technology can be refocusing. Let's say parts of your images are blurred. Can you refocus that? So let's click on upload. By the way, somebody had done it before and from it, I got an inspiration. I'll link their work right here or somewhere. So it's a simple photo of a white flower that I just ran out and took with my phone. Let's go with this crop, click on done, and we want to edit this. Now, let's erase these areas which are out of focus. And to be more specific, let us just type in white flower in focus. You may not have to type that, but I just typed it. You can just experiment with whatever you want. You can also try photograph of white flower in focus. Either way, I've just typed this. Let's see what it creates. There we go. We have something better. We can definitely use this one. Take a look at it. It is still a little out of focus, but can be useful. What if we type in F22? This is the aperture, by the way, to have everything in focus, but when it comes to macro, even that creates blurred areas. Either way, let's take a look. No, that doesn't help. What if we type in focus blending? Now we definitely have something we can use. It's not 100% perfect, but pretty darn good. Now on top of it, you can edit that even more. So click on edit, and then you can erase this area and just type in photograph of white flower in focus. There you go, my friend, even better. So we started with this one, and now we have something like these. Now, if you have followed along this far and not skipped this section, first of all, thank you so much. And secondly, if you look at it in terms of editing photos, you might have observed that something is off. Besides my hair, of course, there is something majorly off. In all of these examples, not once have I used a realistic human face, right? And if you look at photo editing, undeniably, a majority of it consists of human faces. No offense to landscape editors, it's still a huge market, but still, we edit photos of our own all the time, we take selfies, and even many of us who are not into photography take photos of humans. And sometimes we want to add something, sometimes we want to remove someone for whatever reason. But unfortunately, when you try to upload a human face to Dal E, it shows you this warning, uploads with realistic faces are not allowed. So at the moment, photos with realistic human faces cannot be edited. 
stress on realistic because we can do it with artworks of human faces. Now here's the second drawback. Let us say you want to replace her sunglasses with the sunglasses of Lady Gaga, the styles that Lady Gaga wears. So if we type in woman anime wearing sunglasses like Lady Gaga, there you go. It does not take requests when it comes to a particular popular person. I'm risking my suspension for you. So I'd appreciate if you subscribe. And then if you look at the price, it just is to me a little disappointing. I'm not a fan of that. So it is a credit based system, unfortunately. So right now, as you can see, I have 147 credits left. And if you click on buy credits for every $15, you have 115 credits. At least if you give $30 to mid journey, it's nearly unlimited. Now they're going to charge you one credit for every request. We are not talking about the images that you finally end up with or save to collection or download. No, even if the photos are up to no good, every request will cost you one credit. So effectively, $0.13 per request. Now do keep in mind that when you get to sign up, you do get some free credits. So at the moment you get 50 free credits your first month and then 15 every month. And there are lots of terms, these may change. So finally, coming to the big question, how do you get access to it? Unfortunately, at the moment, you have to join the waitlist to do it. And I had to wait a long time. So I had joined in when I created my first video for DAL-E, probably that was a year ago or something right here. And just a few months ago, I got access to it. So right now you have to go to this link. I'll link it up in the description and fill in the details to join in the waitlist. And maybe after a few months, I don't know when you will get access to it. You'll get an email like this and you can click on get started and sign up from there. So to conclude, if you ask me, I'm not a fan of their pricing model. And if you look at it in terms of editing photos and just that, we still have a lot of limitations. But keep in mind, this is just the beginning. It's still in beta and the amount of things it can do right now makes you wonder what it will do in future. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? Where do you think photo editing is headed? Maybe the future is AI, maybe not. Maybe we still have to do it manually for the best results. What do you think? Let's talk in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Thank you.